questions. Uh, group A is going to start with me, and we're going to acclimate our pacing to be able to measure. Uh, and Mark's going to do body measurements. So we're going to learn a couple different measurement techniques so that when you're in the field, you don't have your measuring tape handy. Uh, you, can still, you can still get a, a pretty good idea of what you're working with. So team A, if you can meet me just maybe 20 feet over here, and team B can just come right to the middle of the circle right here. <laughs> well, we should talk about it. Um, why don't we why don't we do a go round and uh, and talk about the ways that we already use our bodies um, to measure things? Okay. So maybe going this way doesn't have to be in order. Just oh, one thing I do is um, if I have to like. I don't know, like get furniture or something, and I don't have measuring. I will be like, oh, okay, the length is like from here to here, and then I go to the store, and I, I know that's like the dimension yeah. I need. I do that too. Okay. Well, I usually take a tape measure and I measure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't use my body, so and if I am hanging something, I eyeball it, and usually it works out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I usually. Um, I really use my feet usually. I walk off things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, or, or I try to do a meter, which is roughly a yard. Yeah, we yeah, learn yeah. roughly how to walk that. So, you know, longer distance, but otherwise I use my feet pretty often. Do you yes, have a, a, foot. a certain measurement for your feet? Like a lot of people measure by three. Yeah, so, so for example, I mean, I would go like this about, I mean, I know roughly to extend it, so here to the, it's roughly one meter would be one yard, yeah. but I, when I have smaller stuff, I go like this, really, I mean, I'm measuring the feet, yeah. <laughs> roughly. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I think that's how the whole thing got started. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, but it's, it's easy and... Yeah. Okay, I use heel to toe also. Okay, and how, do you know how long your feet are? Um, no, so then I have to use that same, that's the unit, my foot. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I, the last thing I measured though, I think it was just my community garden plot and I realized I, you know, I usually just use the tape measure and I'm thinking like, oh, that's sad, why don't I? Yeah. So you, you give me something to think about. <laughs> okay. So Chico. Mm, oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you know, do you know how wide your spread is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I use my arm a lot. It, like my firewood, I measure always mm -hmm. from like my elbow to my knuckles. That's how long I make a, a length of wood. And like if I'm uh, knitting like a hat, I'll I'll start off. I know like the circumference of my head probably needs about uh, arm length of yarn to start off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the, 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 the six foot one inch arm length thing because yes. I am that tall. Yeah. I also, if it's eight feet, I'll look up at it and make sure that it's taller than me so it's somewhere between six and eight. <laughs> um, I also like to use like pencils and like sticks and stuff to get like measurements of stuff far away and then just like move it over and like count it out. And angles, same thing, just move it over. Okay. I think that's all I do usually. <laughs> Maybe hand, hand, cinch, I don't know. I think my hand is like seven inch, is about, I don't really understand inch yet, but I think that's seven <laughs> inch. <laughs> and uh, I'm five feet, so I sometimes think that when I was doing dance stage, I was just using this, but I was thinking because I was doing that when I was in fourth grade. I was also doing the same thing in like <laughs> older, but maybe my length changed, so maybe that was uh, not accurate. <laughs> but, yeah. But you get by. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> I've used uh, my body quite a bit. Like I use my height to measure that to the tip of that house. It's about 20 feet, give or take. I then do the same thing with the hands to try and like measure it all. I'll go grab a wall, look, and say okay, and then do it out. I also used to pace off houses when I would estimate them for painting. I just measured that, got real good at that. Used the six inches about on the width. Yeah. I've used this and then the heel to toe and then, you know, measure like a furniture, like, okay, it's about this high and then I go to the store and 
So I also use my thumb for an inch. So somewhere in the middle of this thumb knuckle to the tip of the thumb to me is about an inch. So if I need a few inches, I'll just kind of compare that. I also feel like I just kind of know what a foot is. Like I just imagine a ruler. And so I, yeah. you know, so sometimes I just am like, okay, one ruler, two ruler. <laughs> and I'm shorter, so I go with the, this is probably five feet, five and a half, something like that. I can usually find a piece of paper, and I know it's eight and a half by 11. Ooh. So I use that more than my body. But I've also thought about getting a tattoo, like right about there. <laughs> <laughs> and I do know that like my cob wall should be about there in thickness. Yeah. <laughs> I use heel toe with a little bit of space in between to make the perfect foot. Uh -huh. <laughs> it might be different every time. <laughs> Well, I find myself measuring stuff a lot. And uh, so after a while, I feel like I can just sort of look at something and feel pretty comfortable guessing. Um, let's see, I think it's about 24 feet between me and that pole. And I, I say that just, I kind of like, <clears throat> I see a spot that feels, feels right about 10 feet. And then I double that, got about four left. <laughs> and uh, it's good enough, just like you were saying. Um, let's see, a lot of times I'll just, you know, use my, my wings, right? I'll touch a wall and I'll kind of go to here and then I'll hold that spot in the air, just kind of right here. <laughs> 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 You know, so that'll get me about 18 feet or something. Um, yeah, and I think I do. I do a lot of. I, I know that my hands are approximately nine inches from here to here. So, like just this morning, actually, I was I was cutting the plywood for our our base. So I measured the width of the existing of, of the plywood, and I needed to cut the link. They needed to be the same. So I just used my hands real quick. Had about four inches left over after four hand, four or five hand things, and then. Did exactly the same on both sides and measured a line and felt really good about it. Um, but you know, there's more that you can do with this. Let's, for instance, measure the height of this pole. Uh, let's see. You said you're five feet. Five one. Five one. Okay. You will you go over and stand at the base of that. Let's try yeah, it one more time. Totally I don't know. How much the does it change average. the fact that, I mean, as it goes the up, of course, it's going to be shorter yeah. or longer, whatever. You know, it's yeah, good. It's going to be, yeah. Yeah, you have to be kind of adjusting in your mind that, yeah. the, that it's, it's the same guess? distance is going to appear to be shorter to you. Right. So, yeah. I don't well. think it's 46. I think I was wrong. Probably I think more like, like 40. 24. I think if it fell and hit you, it's about 24. Well, she has to go back there, otherwise I can't do it. It's 25. Okay. Let's see. What about that house over there? The purple one? Yeah. One thing you can, one thing you can know is that um, most, most houses uh, are based on 8 foot or 10 foot. Yeah. Ceiling spaces. Anybody else? Twenty-two. I got Twenty-two. Okay. Well, I just want to say, um, you know, if you're if you're if you're doing something where you need great exactness, you actually have to go buy something uh, to fit then you're probably going to want to measure it exactly. <laughs> but there's a lot of times when you're doing a concept and you just need to be very rough about it. Like you were saying, you're just quickly estimating. It needs to be more or less. So, yeah, there's, there's times when it's appropriate to just kind of go off of, um, off of, a, off of a body measurement. Measure I've, once, cut big. 
Yeah. So I had to, I once had to draw um, a site plan for a permaculture music festival. Whoa. And I arrived on the site and they had not figured out how to organize the festival. And we didn't have much time. So I just walked the landscape. I am um, with a, a clipboard that was rather large. And um, I sort of sized, visually sized what I thought was the overall size of, of the site. And then I figured out how that would fit on my piece of paper. Like if the site was um, 500 feet long, then I divided my paper into five lengthwise and maybe about the same width-wise um, in order to make sure that everything would fit proportionally. And then I remembered my reference markers as I was looking at the site, where those fifth points were. And I knew that what I would create would not be perfect. I was going to, and actually, I located trees. I, I walked the site this way. I went over, I walked the site this way. I tried to see what was at the same level as I was going. Mm which helped me to kind of understand the, the landforms. And I was able to draw a reasonably, I think, reasonably accurate topographic map that sort of sh showed where the level spots were and where the steep spots were and where the trees were located. And that was all just by, um, you know, kind of being proportional about it and, and making, making quick guesses and not needing it to be perfect. I think that's one thing is just like, let go of needing it to be absolutely perfect and, and see what you come up with. Um, and there have been other times when I'm working on, on the site where I forget my tape and uh, somebody needs a rough concept quickly. So I will literally just use my body. I'll like walk along the side of the building, <laughs> like doing the same thing with the wing spread and, and measuring verticals by sighting and using my knee or my shoulder or whatever. And just really quickly um, create a sketch that's, that's accurate enough to represent the idea to them. I think I designed a... Uh, a family's permaculture garden that way. I measured the perimeter of the house, how it sat on the site, how big the site was, where the trees were, and then um, went home and sketched that up and, and drew a site plan for them. With, you know, where their chickens would go and where their rain barrels would go and their, their garden. Uh, so, yeah, I think that you, probably you, you don't do that until you feel like you're confident enough. Um, what somebody was saying about establishing level. Oh, you, you were saying it. A picture on a wall. You really do have an inherent um, sense about what is absolutely vertical and what is, what is horizontal. Um, we really live with it all the time. So uh, you can make those judgments for yourself. Like, and I level it. Yeah. Like say you're on a slope and you look at a tree and you're like, okay, you spot 10 feet on that tree. And then you trace what you consider to be the level line. And then you can tell yourself what kind of slope you're dealing with, maybe over how much distance. And then you can actually draw that um, as a site section, as if you're cutting through the site. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's pretty valid. You brought up natural building. Um, I was actually on a natural building site earlier, earlier in my life when I was first learning about natural building. and. Uh, this guy had a tape measure, and he, he put it on a stone, and then he took a sledgehammer and smashed it. That was Yonko Evans. And he said, uh, who's a complex character, after all? And uh, he, he said, never use this on a natural building site. Always use your body. If, like, you have to be creating a deep engagement with it. And at best, it's based on the proportion of your body anyway. Like establish level with your own senses, establish vertical with your own relationship to gravity. You know, never measure on a natural building site. I wonder though, I mean, as he's sitting there while everyone else is asleep, he's probably out there measuring yeah. stuff. Yeah. Where did you like, get that tape measure? <laughs> he's probably got a few more that like he's ready to smash on a moment's notice that maybe he gets a little bit of use out of. Yeah. Who knows? But uh, is that is that something that's part of the ethic that you, you've learned? Uh, well, I've learned that, but always use a level. Really? I've heard never put that level away. You're crazy. Well, 
<laughs> okay, well, there's different schools of thought, yeah. apparently. <laughs> the level is, like, very important. Okay. <laughs> well, Otherwise, it's crooked. I'll tell you one time when I'll use a level for sure, and that's, um, I will always use a level when I'm putting in a gutter. Because you, you don't want gutters to be doing this. It, they'll hang off your house in the weirdest way. They need to be very, like, very subtle. They need to be sloping where you want them. They can't, if you want it to go over here, it can't slope this way. It needs to go this way, but it can't be too steep. It'll look awful. So you have to get it right. So there, there are definitely times when I religiously use a level. Um, but certainly surveyors use levels. If you really want to get something right when you're out on the site and you want to kind of do it by hand using, I mean, surveys are, are based on establishing level and vertical and stuff like that. If you're using a level, make sure the floor is level too. Right. If you're building a structure and the floor is not level and you're making it all plumb, you're making it plumb crooked. Yeah, if, if everything's the same height. Yep. Yeah. Mm. yeah, for sure. When we're walking out on um, our, our uh, project spaces, um, is there a kind of a quick way to do contour lines? Yeah, okay. Good, good question. Okay. Well, um, so believe it or not, this this uh, block is about six feet from the lowest part to the highest part, which is the diagonal corner. Um, and I went and figured that out by basically sighting visually. Like this slope here is about three feet, and then I. I walked into our backyard, kind of keeping track of how much I felt the slope was adding up in terms of inches, and then I visually sighted the next abrupt rise. And I know that it generally slopes up to just before we get to the sidewalk on that corner, and calculated that it's, it's six feet, but you know, it could be five eight, it could be six four, but it's really, really close. Um, here's a slope. How much do you guys think that that is sloping? Oh, interesting. Between here and the garage? Yeah, how much is it dropping from, from mm -hmm. here to there? Yeah, what do we three figure feet. that out? Three feet? Everybody come up with a number. I'm going to walk it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Head off that way. It's not a pretty distance. Yeah. But it's actually just kind of look lower. All right, let's do that. Believe it or not, I, I estimate that you guys are standing right about there. Yeah, I agree. It's a lot easier to see it from the bottom. I think this side would be more than anything, not less. Yeah. Kind of deceptive, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's important to note that it's much easier to tell from down there. Ah, like is it? Looking uphill than it is to figure it out from down there. Oh, I didn't even look. <laughs> but down to like uphill, you're sort of like down in. Okay, there's that. Okay, that's going to about here. But like going down, you're like doing a double gear section. Yeah, it's harder. Mm -hmm. So the thing about oh, that's interesting. So the, you guys, the thing about all this, um, just as you've found with your your immediate body, body measurements using your your digits, um, is it's really a question of just practicing it um, and, and getting getting comfortable with it. I feel comfortable just having stood there and estimating its height. I feel comfortable enough to actually draw contours on a site plan and then present that to a client as we're talking about like how we're going to site their garage or something like that. So we're going to uh, be calibrating our pace to uh -huh. be able to measure distances okay. in this, in this uh, station over here. And so there are two sand lines. Uh, it's 100 feet between them. So this is the starting line. And the finish line is just past the curb there, kind of partway into the other, the next intersection. And I've got little lines scratched in the ground at 25 foot increments. Now what I'd like you to do is starting on this line. Okay, first I have to show you what a pace is for those of you who um, don't know. So a pace is two steps. So I'll, I'll count my paces, okay? One, two, 
three. Okay? It's not every, it's not one, two, three. It's like starting from the line, it's like the half one. And one, two. Okay, so from this starting line, I would like you to walk down to the, the sand line uh, that's down there, and then remember what that number was that you got to. Now, my, my guess is it's going to be somewhere between 17 and 23. It's just that we're all generally between five and six feet tall. Um, and then from that line, do the same thing back at your natural pace. Again, this is just at your comfortable walking pace and uh, to, to kind of verify that you did in fact walk your natural pace the same way both ways. And then, uh, and then I'll, I'll hear from you what your numbers were, okay? So, yeah. You don't have to, all, um, on the line, whatever you do, just make sure you end up on the same relative spot and then do the same thing on the way back. Um, for now, it's just how many paces it took you to get to the finish line, well, the I'm other sand line. Yeah. Think, think normal. So yeah, from the starting line, it's going to be <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. Be perfect. <laughs> as long as you're ending on the same point, it's, a, it's exactly 100 feet. So if you start this way, then just end up. Well, I think you'd be going to like a measure from field to toe, right? Um, it's not that kind of measurement. Okay. It's a piece of measurement. Yeah, so just, uh, just to keep the count. Oh, I guess it is the same. Okay, so you're you're more or less on a five foot pace. What are some of the numbers that you got? I got twenty six and a half and twenty five. Okay, so again, that's still pretty accurate, and so um, that means that your natural pace is a little bit shorter than five feet. Okay, others. Nineteen. Nineteen. So you're almost there. Um, your natural pace is just slightly more than five feet. So what, um, whatever your number was, if it was more than twenty, you have to. Um, artificially increase <laughs> your pace just a little bit. So I'm, if that were me, then I would just intentionally take a slightly longer <laughs> step, okay? If your number was under 20, you need to shorten it up just a little bit. So now for the next 10 minutes, uh, we're gonna go back and forth and you're going to try to get yourself to um, that five foot pace. Now here's, I've made it a little bit easier for you, which is that every 25 feet, there's a scratch in the, in the ground right there, okay? So when you're counting off, you should hit that first line on five, on the next one, 10, on the next one, 15, and then that last line, 20. So take four, six times back and forth to, to get yourself as comfortable as we can in the time that we have with, uh, with reaching that number and your pacing, okay? Every scratch in the ground is exciting. Uh, each one you should reach, the way that we're counting it off now, it'll be five, the first line will be five paces, the second line will be 10, the third line will be 15, and the finish line will be 20, okay? So we want to do 20 paces? About? Yeah, you're trying, to, you're trying to adjust yourself so that okay. you're getting exactly 20 paces to the finish line. We're doing the splits. 
<laughs> so I got 24 and 25. Okay, that means that um, you want to increase the distance a little bit each time uh -huh. beyond your normal comfortable okay. step. Okay. Now we're going to actually do that one more time, but instead of counting your paces, which was going like one, two, three, four, three, we're going to count off in fives, which is actually counting out the actual distance that you're walking. So you've been acclimating yourself to a five foot pace, which is why you get 20 in 100 feet. So now you're going to count off in fives, and you should be ending on 100 feet. So count off in fives this time and go down and back, just like we did now, counting off in fives, okay? So now you'd be hitting those lines in between would be 25, 50, 75, and 100. So, so where we're at now is that you've all just gotten to the point where you can count off any distance. I'll repeat this to them because they're, they're going to uh, take a minute to get that. Uh, <laughs> they're 25 feet apart. Yep. So now that you're familiar with counting off in five, uh, I'm going to have you measure a, a distance that is beyond the 100 foot line, okay? So from the start line, looking ahead to that car that's parked back there, imagine a line that crosses the road to the very front of that car, like the bumper, front bumper, and uh, pace it out, and then you can check yourself by pacing it back to this line here and tell me the distance in feet it is to the front of that car from this line. <laughs> now the reason why I have you counting off in actual feet is so that you don't have to do any math. You're just, as you walk, you're counting out the actual distance that you're walking. Yeah. See that? I've never been good at counting by fives or twos. I always <laughs> yeah, I know, you know, not everybody's <laughs> got, that, uh, got that talent. How about you? What was the distance that you got? Uh, Beautiful, okay. So the measurement that I got when I measured with the, um, with the tape is uh, 173 feet. So good job. Okay. That's really excellent. Hey, 175, that's not bad, I guess. Yeah, it's not. Training. <laughs> yeah, it's very good, very good uh, pacing. So you're all really well acclimated. Um, so the final exercise is to uh, measure the distance around the block. Okay. And the reason, the way that we're going to do this, you would get a very, you would get a different uh, measurement if you walked on the inside edge versus the outside edge of the block. Uh, I think there's only this one section here that doesn't have a sidewalk. And so just to give you a sense of like, so that we're consistent between each other, um, walk along the edge of this road here so you just like, as if the sidewalk were just the first like four feet of the road. Does that make sense? Okay, so in the center, you'll walk in the center of the block, uh, of the sidewalk, I mean, all the way around. And um, when you get back, remember your number and we'll check in with each other and see how we did on that one with a larger distance. The, the simple application of this, of course, is that you can measure uh, lengths of walls, perimeters of buildings, perimeters of properties, and to calibrate yourself wherever you live, um, if you mark an increment that you can pace out, whether it's 25 feet or 100 feet, and as you're walking by, just give it a go. Uh, and, 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 you know, just get that body memory more and more, then you, you'll more and more accurately be able to pace any distance as long as you can keep the count. So. Good job acclimating your body for measurement. Thanks, everybody. Awesome.